Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Why are humans like this? Stories of survival and perseverance. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Today's video is kind of like, I guess, a review of a docu-series on Hulu. It came out last summer, but I'm new to it. So it is called Betrayal the Perfect Husband. Um, it's about a seemingly perfect man, you know, Everybody loved him. He was a great husband. His children loved him. Everybody loved him. But you know, sometimes there's always more to the story. Sometimes perfect people, seemingly perfect people, aren't so perfect. I'm going to play like a 20 second clip from the trailer and then I'll be back with my opinion. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Spencer escalated so much that he became a predator. The first thing he said to me was, I've never done this with a student. I've never felt this way about anyone. Teacher of the year is now charged with sex crime. He hugged me and he very audibly sniffed me. Seems so strange that no one noticed that this teacher had coverings over his windows during the school day and all the time. He was dominating, scary, addicted, dangerous. So you guys saw the clip. I don't want to play too much because that is from Hulu and I really don't want to copyright strike. So hopefully all goes well. But yeah, so I'm going to give a little backstory. So the second wife, I want to call her the second wife because Spencer has been married before. The second wife and Spencer were like high school sweethearts. And they decided to give each other a break because Spencer was graduating and she was still in school. And I think she felt like, hey, go ahead and live your life. So Spencer ended up getting married to someone else and then they had children they then they divorced so then he reconnected with his um second wife and everything seemed perfect in the beginning for her you know he was like you know very attentive he was he would put notes everywhere like oh i love you blah 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 you know just he was always doing sweet things they were doing good in her eyes for like seven years so i guess the seven year itch happened so she found out that they had a search warrant done on their home. And when she asked Spencer what happened, he wouldn't answer her. Law enforcement took him away to jail. And then she found out that he was a serial cheater when she went into his Facebook account to disable his Facebook account because he was getting like a lot of hate comments on his page. Because at this time, she didn't know that he, you know, what he really did was real. She thought that he just had accusations of being abusive to a student. So as she was going through his Facebook account, she saw lots of messages between Spencer and many, many women. Um, basically, he had been having multiple affairs and she did not know about it. And then, um, you know, she realized that her entire marriage was a lie. The man who seemed like the perfect husband was not a, the perfect husband. He was just a deceiver. So I'm not going to talk too much about Spencer's infidelity with his wife. The main point, the main point of this video is to support a sexual assault survivor, Rachel. Rachel was a student that Spencer abused. He started grooming her when she was 15 years old. Rachel was in a club at school called the Drone Club. And I guess Spencer was like the head of the club. And so, you know, he groomed her. So they end up having sexual relations. Basically, he sexually assaulted her because even though she was 16 and in Georgia, that's considered age of consent. He's a teacher and you can't do that. In addition, I don't care what state you're in. If you are an adult and you're having sex with someone under the age of 18, you're a predator. You're a pedophile. I don't care what nobody says. I don't know what law. I don't care what law book says what. Any adult that has sex with children under the age of 18 are child molesters. So yeah, this abuse relationship lasted for three years. And Rachel talked about how she became so angry and so depressed. Like she turned into a different person. Um, when she was in her senior year, Spencer got deployed because he was in... Um, some type of military situation. 
He got deployed and Rachel felt like a relief because she finally got a break from him. She said she felt good when he was gone. Um, he lost his control of her. The news came out about Spencer abusing his students, teachers and others victim blame Rachel. They were saying, you know, like the typical victim blaming stuff, you know, she was old enough to know she knew better. It's her fault. Slut shaming, all this other stuff that sick adults do. Anyone that blames someone under the age of 18 who was in a sexual situation with someone over the age of 18 is a sick, sick adult. Spencer was many, many years older than this girl. And again, she was under the age of 18. So, you know, Spencer went to trial and all that other stuff. And no, I think Spencer got a some type of plea deal. He only served five years in prison and 15 years probation. He has to register as a sex offender. He cannot be around anyone under the age of 18. What I didn't like about the docu um, series is that the wife, you know, no offense to her. I understand that she's she was very devastated to learn that her, you know, so-called perfect husband had been a serial cheater. But it's not it wasn't about her. He was a sex addict and also a child abuser. Most of the people he had sex with were adults. And to our knowledge, he only had sex with the one student, Rachel. But I feel like he was in the process of grooming other people. Because in the docuseries, people had talked about how he, you know, how he was with them. So if Rachel did not speak out about the abuse, then he could have gotten more victims. Definitely. So shout out to Rachel for being brave and coming out and sharing your story and getting this man locked up even though he wasn't locked up for long it's a shame that people victim blamed rachel this society is just sick 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 so yeah i don't like how the wife made it all about her like oh i'm so devastated i'm so devastated how could he oh my goodness like i don't know what this man did to her but she truly had on some rose colored glasses she basically didn't get any hints, any clues that he was doing anything until the authorities came to take him away to jail. Even while they was taking him away, she's yelling at them like, he's a good man. He's a good person. This something you guys got it wrong. Like she she couldn't believe it. She was in disbelief. If it it wasn't until she saw all the messages on Facebook and everything that she saw that this man was a sex addict that's what he was he was more than just a cheater he was a sex addict when you guys watch the docu, docu series you'll see all the women he want he was into all the positions he wanted all the fantasies he had like he was always having sex he was always in pursuit he was always pursuing it didn't stop he did it with neighbors with friends with with anyone no matter where he was, he always found an opportunity to flirt and to be all fake nice to kind of get people to put their guards down. Very predatory behavior. And because the wife wanted answers, she continued to communicate with him while he was in prison. And she basically wasted her time because all he did was like, you know, really didn't take any, he didn't take any accountability any accountability he blamed the student for coming on to him like he made it seem like she was the one like just like a true predator a true liar a true narcissist no accountability this man deserves to be in prison right now he was let out in 2022 and i don't understand how he was released but i can't understand because we have a world that protects abusers we have a world that blames victims. So I cannot be too surprised, but it still makes me angry that he only served five years and he truly was not remorseful. It makes you sick. It makes you feel so sick that our children are out there with teachers like that and just people in general like that, whether it's a family member or a friend or a neighbor, there's people like that who will not take accountability. They will blame others, the world, everything, and not say, you know what, what I did was wrong and I need help, I need therapy. 
So back to the wife. The wife was just so devastated, the whole docuseries. And she, you know, she did acknowledge the victim. She feels bad about it. But I really feel like she made the docuseries more about her. Like, girl, get over yourself. Like, I'm sorry for you. I understand you were depressed and sad. But your husband raped a child. Forget about it forget about anything else he did and focus on that. That is the main issue. Your husband was a predator. He is a predator. Like girl, like, so yeah, the docuseries was interesting, you know, something that I would recommend you watch. But again, I just didn't like how the focus was so much on the wife feeling betrayed. When I found out if I was her and I found out about what he did to a student, I wouldn't care about all his other relationships because you need to focus more on the victim because you are a grown woman and you have technology. You know, she could have checked his emails a long time ago or check his Facebook accounts. His wife, the wife had way too much trust in the husband. I don't know how he allowed, I don't know how he managed to make her feel so reassured, but it was really weird. And I don't know how long it's going to take for her to really get over him because, like I said, that was her high school sweetheart and she was madly in love with that guy. I mean, she didn't even have any children. She never had the chance to have any children because I think originally they should have been together. But because, you know, they took take a break and then he moved on with his life. He had his own children and she was single for a long time or dating or whatever she was doing. And she never had children. So she basically wasted her life, wasted her time. You know, but girl, you are an adult and you have another opportunity to move on. The the 16 year old, the 16 year old child that was raped by your husband, that's going to be something that she has to live with for the rest of her life. She was brave enough and strong enough to speak out about Spencer. She does like speaking engagements where she tries to encourage victims and survivors and stuff like that. So I'm proud of her. She's making... um She's making a mark in life. I do want to end the video by saying um, one of the people in the videos, in the document series, um, I think she was a psychologist or something, some type of mental health professional. She said the most important part of the healing journey, the most important part of the healing journey is for us to not be defined by our stories, but to simply be authentic, but to simply be our authentic selves. Um, yeah, so it was an Indian lady. She looks Indian, in my opinion. Hopefully I'm not wrong. Um, I forgot her name. I didn't catch it. So if you see the docuseries, you'll see who I'm talking about. So I will recommend you watch it. And this honestly reminded me of the other lady that came out. Risa Tessa, Risa Tessa, whatever. Tessa Risa, I think. I don't know. On TikTok, she came out, she came out with her many, many series um, videos talking about when she was fooled by her ex-husband so to me this story is like before that this is like the white version of lesion so spencer is like the white lesion and he came before lesion so anyway hope you guys enjoyed my review have you seen the docuseries um betrayal the perfect husband yet if you did what do you think about it if you haven't seen it do you plan on seeing it Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.